Hello, it is the 15th of February, 2011. Welcome to today's Silver Log and Silver Analysis. And today we're going to go over the national debt ceiling. That is the chart on the screen now. A quick look at the market today in silver as well as the gold to silver ratio. So let's get started within this chart. And I guess if you're trading this in whatever way, you can state, hey, wait a second here, we were trading in this uh, little range just upward channel and it just broke it out of the upside right in here and it's been very bullish going higher and well it only goes towards the upside because the national debt keeps going higher and well debt of course is 100 percent guaranteed we've Heard from uh, Federal Reserve uh, Chairman Ben Bernanke stating that it would be catastrophic if they didn't raise the ceiling. And I don't know about you, but I find the entire system of the monopoly of fiat Federal Reserve notes to be extremely catastrophic when debt is 100% guaranteed. And it's been raised on multiple occasions, as you can see on this chart. It's been now about a year or so almost since they've raised it. They had a decent time in here without having to raise it. But uh, it's uh, definitely skyrocketing to the upside. Now, this started off at $49 billion in here. And now it's at uh, $14,000 billion. Imagine yourself, you get a credit card for, say, $49,000. And you go and you decide, you know what, I'm going to take this to, uh, let's go to the Wynn, maybe the uh, the Bellagio, maybe, and some sort of casino. And, and I'm going to try to earn an income by gambling there. And Well, next thing you know, the $49,000, uh, you take it all out, you ask for more money. And the ceiling level keeps increasing. Now, next thing you know, you've turned 49000 into what would be like $14 million, I think. <laughs> and yet, it's catastrophic if we stop gambling, I guess. And really, I'm just saying that because in gambling, you know you're always going to lose and that your debt's going to keep going higher as would, of course, the uh, national debt. And uh, I, I went to the national debt clock uh, st uh, st to get some stats. This is the official site. And I just wanted to point out some interesting uh, little stats. Now, the debt, debt ceiling is $14.2 trillion and change, about another $100 uh, billion away. Uh, so I'm probably forgetting uh, three zeros on here. Obviously, I'm not probably forgetting. I'm definitely forgetting three zeros after this number. Fourteen trillion is the U.S. national debt from their web page, which means per citizen it's forty-five thousand. But on there it says the total debt is fifty-five point seven trillion. That's all debts combined, which means every citizen has an obligation, I guess, to be paying. A little under a hundred and eighty thousand, the total amount of interest this year alone, which is a month and a half, is upwards to three point five trillion. Total mortgage debt thirteen point seven trillion. And remember, this debt is one hundred percent guaranteed simply on the way money is created and the way money is lent out not a lot of people don't even know this in fact a heck of a lot did not know this as early as five six years ago but it is very hazardous to have a system of this nature moving on officially unemployed is 13.7 or 13.7 million 13.8 million but actually it's 24.6 and I find that quite amusing sometimes, how they say officially this is a number, but actually it's much higher. As all of these numbers of here, up here are, are official, what they actually are, uh, well, that's for another day, I guess. The amount of U.S. families in this world 
82 million. And uh, I've, I've got an extra O on here, so let's just ignore that. But there are 44 million on food stamps, which is a little over half of the U.S. families. As far as bankruptcies in 2011 are concerned, today is the 15th of February. This is six weeks. 1.6 million, and the foreclosures are a little over a million. So when I've been talking about silver, a lot of it's been because of the debt issues, of the fiat money problems, and if uh, you haven't seen what's been going on, obviously by watching this video you have a little bit, I don't know how much time there is left. I'm, I'm surprised we still have as much as we have, we, have, we have been having as we are now into 2011 and still a lot of people have no idea what's going on. Anyway, enough about this. We're not going to move on to silver charts. We'll start with the uh, the actual uh, silver chart itself for today. And uh, what's very encouraging after we had a nice gain yesterday is so far today, and it's still early, this, this chart can still change is how it's consolidating its gains just a little bit. In fact, that this this candle in here is very similar to this one in here. How you have a big gain and it just has a uh, a less volatile day moving uh, through the side, if you will. And if we take a look at this uh, former level of resistance that we encountered, we can see that the resistance in here is now becoming that of support. So that's a very bullish sign. And uh, as I was saying yesterday, it looks pretty much inevitable as if the market has an appointment up towards this uh, 31 and a quarter to 31 and a half level. And uh, whether it happens this week or whenever, it's uh, it just seems as if that's... Uh, coming into play. Now as far as an uptrend is concerned, I think that the most uh, more legitimate one might be something in the area like this. This connects uh, many different uh, levels at the start of this uh, run and then again heat in here and for resistance it tests the first uh, level up in here and then this mark in here. So uh, if we break through this level, uh, I'd be thinking maybe we go up to this line in here. Now, as far as the uh, gold to silver ratio is concerned, we're going to put that chart on the screen now. And this is uh, going back to uh, 1968. And uh, if we draw some trend lines, we can see that the trend line before was uh, back in the 1970s into the 1990s was that the gold to silver ratio was uh, really going higher towards the upside. And uh, that's changed. If we uh, draw some trend lines now, we can uh, see towards the uh, last resistance level that it, uh, it broke the downtrend line. And when you break a trend line, like I'd say a downtrend line like this one, one of three things happens. One, it's going to be a reversal and the market would go higher. I guess it did for a little bit, but not for that long. Two, it could be a, a trap and then recapture the trend line. Considering I found support there, that didn't happen. Or three, the rate of descent will slow down or will consolidate through time. And that's pretty much what's been going on. It's mainly consolidated within this range of uh, 42 upwards to about 80. And right now it's at the bottom end of this range. And the more often that uh, you can have, the more often you test support resistance, the more often that it will be taken out. And just want to draw a line in here because before the uh, level of resistance in here was uh, taken out, support in here, support in here, support, support, and now we're back to this level again. So therefore, I would expect the odds of a break below this to be pretty decent. And the ratio, as people ask me, what do you think the ratio should be? Now, historically, 
the ratio is about uh, 15, 16 to 1, somewhere in that area in here, which really is all the way down below here. And as far as the inventories are concerned, a lot of people can make a case that it looks like it should be about 10 or 11 to 1. But regardless of the fact, I think it's uh, definitely a little concerning that uh, for this to go higher, that is, that it has really mainly been ranging through time, at least during this uh, box in here, after it uh, had an up move, which was obviously this one in uh, here. So to me, this looks a little bearish. On um, If we look at this chart logarithmically, it doesn't look as bad. A logarithmically is uh, used to, uh, it shows percentage gains a lot better. And when we take a look at this chart, obviously in a major uptrend from the whole 1970s upwards to about 97 or so, it looks like, or approximately anyway. And then we had a break of this trend line. So it got above the resistance level in here, found support, found support, found support. It didn't get above this resistance, or didn't get above in here. So the fact that it found support here, it still it could still be bullish in here. But what was important was after coming to this level to really hold this mark in here. It did not do that. And that's what's going to be giving me areas for concern on a technical level. Now, fundamentally, because of what I've been mentioning, the historic level has been towards the 15 to 1 level. And if you look at inventories, you can make a case for 10 and 11. And if you make a case for what gold and silver actually does, to me, I don't think it makes much sense at all that it's anywhere above this 30 or 20 level. But I've also come to figure out that this world doesn't make too much sense to begin with anyway. And that's just personal opinion. But I'm going to finish the video at that. Thank you for watching and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.